Hey up you top tenors, you made the excellent decision yet again to click on one of our videos and I'm not going to let you down because this is Most Amazing Top 10, the channel where we take all kinds of weird and wonderful things from all around the world and turn them into a nice little top 10 list so you guys don't have to. And today we've got the top 10 hybrid animals that actually exist. But before we get all crisscross with our genetic code, I want to ask you guys something. If you can make a hybrid of two famous people in the world, who would it be? For me, it would be The Rock and Donald Trump to make the, the rock. That's what it'd be called? Oh god, no. Oh actually no, no, I take it back. But for real though, in the animal kingdom it is sometimes possible for two separate species to interbreed if they shared a common ancestor not too long ago. I know you guys want to see exactly what I mean, so what are we still doing in the intro? Let's jump into our number 10 right now with the zebroids. When a zebra meets another equine species, such as a horse or a donkey, this happens. Depending on what the zebra gets intimate with, they can produce a zorse or even a zonkey. Just look at these things. They're like so strange looking, but on a genetic level, things get even stranger because the two species crossbred, such as a horse and a zebra, actually have a very different number of chromosomes that make up their genetic code. Now normally this would be a major hurdle when it comes to two different species interbreeding, but when it comes to zebroids, they're just like, screw you, Mother Nature. On a side note, after hearing the word zonkey, I now know what I'm going to call my first child. Excellent. Trotting in at number nine now, we've got the Growler Bear. If you just cannot decide which is the coolest bear between a polar and a grizzly bear, well, meet the Growler Bear, which is a mix between the two. Although the polar bears are found in the Arctic and the grizzly bears in North America, their habitats do sometimes overlap, and when the bears meet, Growler bears are born. One possible explanation for this is that global warming is melting the polar bears' icy homes and forcing them south into grizzly bear territory. But now we are on to number eight, which is the beefalo. And now I'm hungry. Unlike a lot of animals on this list, the beefalo is actually fertile, which means they can produce their own offspring. They themselves are the product of crossbreeding domestic cattle, the cows you see out in the field, and American bison. As you can see from the size and shape of these things, they were bred for their meat production. And it turned out their meat tends to be lower in fat and cholesterol than beef and less damaging to rangeland than cattle. I bet their milk is like steroids. Hmm. But on that note, we're going to talk about the wolf dog, which is our number seven. And I'm going to give you seven guesses which two animals make a wolf dog. I really hope nobody got this one wrong because it is, of course, a canine hybrid of a wolf and a dog. Now, usually the parent that's a dog will be a breed that resembles a wolf. So you're more likely to see a wolf being bred with a German shepherd than you are with a poodle. That would just be weird. Wolf dogs' appearances can vary wildly, and there is no real way of guessing what they'll look like until they're born. Because the traits they inherit from either parent can be extremely random. Now any pet that has wolf dog heritage at least four generations back can be considered a wolf dog. So you guys should check your family tree and if you see a great grandmother that's a little bit too hairy, maybe you're part wolf dog. But next up we're going to look at the Narluga because that is our number six. As you might have guessed from the name, these are the product of narwhals and belugas. Now narwhals might look like a fictional cross between a unicorn and a seal, but they are real and if they are bred with a beluga whale, they make a narluga. This occurrence is extremely rare though and the only properly documented example of it happening in the wild was when scientists found one of them on the coast of West Greenland. They can be mainly identified by their massive heads, which has got me thinking that maybe I'm part Narluga. It explains a lot. Anyway, we are now halfway through our mashup of the animal kingdom, and we're at number five, which is the leopard. A leopard is the product of a male leopard and a lioness. The first documented case of this was one that was bred in India in 1910, but they have since been bred in zoos all around the world. Although the crossbreeding of these kind of cats are fascinating to the public, animal welfare groups have criticised the breeding of the leopards. Although they may look really cool, leopards often die as cubs, and if they do make it to adulthood, they have a very painful life with a number of different health problems. So just remember guys, just because something looks cool doesn't necessarily mean it is, like onyx. Onyx sucks. I've been waiting so long for a chance to fit that into a video, but now we're at number four and we're looking at karmas. If you give a camel from Asia and a llama from South America some private time alone, you will come back months later to find a karma. Well, not quite. They were actually first produced using artificial insemination to create an animal that had the size and strength of a camel, but the more easygoing personality of a llama. Anyone that's ever seen a camel will know they're a bit grumpy. Well, sadly, it didn't go to plan. Karmas took after 
after their camel parents and have proved to be very uncooperative with humans. I guess you could really say they've got the hump. Or not, whatever. Let's just move on to our number three now, which is Savannah Cats. Now, if you want something a bit more exotic than a normal house cat, then maybe the Savannah Cat is for you. This is what you get when you mix a wild African cat with an everyday domestic house cat. They gained popularity among breeders in the 1980s, but it wasn't registered as an official breed until 2001. Unlike domestic cats, they are very social creatures. They're also bigger than house cats and can reach 25 pounds in weight. And the best part is that Savannah Cats actually use litter to boxes when they're domesticated. I might get one just to train my cat. Damn you, Sadie. Time flies when you're crossbreeding, and it's already time to announce our number two, which is Wolfins. Now, if this list was made purely on names alone, Wolfins would win it for me. But before you guys freak out and are like, wow, no way, this isn't real, whales are way too big. Well, you're technically right, but these whales are called false killer whales. They look a lot like killer whales, but they actually belong to the dolphin family. So when you breed them with a bottlenose dolphin, you get the wolfin, which is exactly half of either parent. Their bottlenose parent has 88 teeth, for example, and their false killer whale parent has 44. The wolfin child will sit right in the middle with 66 teeth. All right, time for a quick recap of all our weird and wonderful hybrids. We've looked at beefaloes, zebroids, and wolf dogs, but the one hybrid in the world that has captured the public's attention and got people interested in animal hybrids more than any other is our number one, and it's the Liger. A Liger is born when a male lion breeds with a female tiger. They are the largest living cats on the planet. Lions and tigers have growth inhibitors in their genes which help to control their size and stop them from growing too big. But when they produce a Liger together, these growth inhibitors don't seem to be active, which means Ligers can reach incredible sizes. Some female Ligers can grow to 10 feet in length and weigh more than 700 pounds. To make things even crazier, you can then breed male Ligers with female tigers and lions. You end up producing things like Thai Ligers and Thai Ligons, but we're gonna have to save those for a potential part two, guys, because that's all we got time for in this episode of Most Amazing Top 10. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date with all the great content we have on this channel. There's two of those videos floating over there right now if you want to give them a click. In the meantime, guys, my name's Danny Burt. You can follow me on Instagram right down there somewhere. Thanks for watching Most Amazing Top 10, and I'll see you very soon. Thank you.